Well, as Jasper said, one thing that's clear today in Turkey is that this country is profoundly divided. Now, here in the earthquake zones, the opposition did try to capitalize on some of that anger over the government's slow response to the quake, and they have had some success. The province of Hatay, for example, that Erdogan won in the last election of uh, 2018, has flipped by the smallest of margins. Kemal Kilic Darolu won there. He's also won this city where I am, the city of Adana, by a pretty small margin as well. However, interestingly, Antakya, the city most impacted by the quake, which I visited just afterwards in February of this year, um, still voted in pretty high numbers for, uh, the, for President Erdogan, as did the city of Kahraman Marash, another city devastated by the earthquake. There, the president won by over 70 percent of the vote. So it does seem that plenty of people in these areas trust the president when he says, I will rebuild your regions within a year. And that message from the opposition, who didn't give a timeline on uh, how long it would take to rebuild, but instead prioritized the safety of buildings rather than speed, clearly that message hasn't appealed to enough uh, here in the South for uh, Kilic Dorolu to make the gains that he so needed to make to avoid this second round. Mm. Nadia, earlier Jasper was saying that if this is indeed confirmed going to a second round, that it looks like Erdogan might take uh, the, the, the upper hand again. Uh, do you feel that that's true, that he does have the upper hand going into the runoff? Yeah, I absolutely agree with what Jasper had to say there for two reasons. As he mentioned, Sian Oan, the third candidate for the presidency, who won about 5%. He's an ultra-nationalist figure here in Turkey. In fact, he only got on the ballot in the first place thanks to the support of President Erdogan. So it's pretty likely that the majority of his votes will go to the president in the second round. Now, the other reason is the parliamentary election. Um, Erdogan and his alliance have a majority, it looks like, in the parliament now. And lots of Turks want stability. They don't want a division between who controls parliament and who controls the presidency. So people may well opt to keep Erdogan in power uh, for that re reason as well. And clearly, that's a significant blow to the opposition. But what the opposition would say today is actually the odds have been stacked against them because the media here in Turkey under Erdogan's rule has become increasingly pro-state. There's this, The independent media environment here has shrunk. And I'll just give you one statistic to exemplify that. You know, during the election campaign, Erdogan's speeches were given about 48 hours of coverage on television, whereas Kilic Darolu, the opposition candidate, struggled to get more than half an hour worth of coverage for his point of view. So the opposition are saying today, look, we, maybe we don't have the numbers we thought we had, but actually this was a really difficult fight for us.